I'm Kim Solis. I'm a physician author from Edmonton, Canada. This is my writing partner, Nikki Olson, and we're very pleased to be doing these videos for the Lifeboat Foundation. We're here to discuss the differences between virtual reality and mixed reality, and how these technologies will enhance the human experience in the future. Recently, I was in the mixed reality lab of Adrian David Chiok in Singapore. He has had almost a lifelong interest in mixed reality, and he's done some very interesting things. This film clip will give you some idea of his background, and also give you an idea of what mixed reality is or could be. When Princess Leia appeared as a talking hologram in Star Wars more than 20 years ago, a seven-year-old boy sat entranced in the cinema, dreaming of making the movie magic into reality. I always wondered how could we do that in reality. Today, Dr. Chok and his colleagues have come up with a way for users to experience both worlds at once. Instead of just reading about your favorite characters, how about seeing them as well? Say, your favorite baseball hero? Or you could even have ballerinas leaping off the page. Users wear lightweight head-mounted displays that feed the virtual images to them, while acting as an eye to the real world so that they can see physical objects at the same time. Research started almost two years ago with a three million grant from the Defence Science and Technology Agency. They're very interested in using this for the Singapore military. Now what they're going to use it for is that they're going to have this mixed reality for the soldiers in the battlefield. So the soldiers could be in the kind of urban combat situation and they could see like labels on buildings, graphic objects and for example where is a tanker and where is a sniper. And the possibilities are almost endless. Cheng Lian, Straits Times TV. So that then gives you some idea of what mixed reality is. One way to think about the distinction between mixed reality and virtual reality is by using the kind of continuum seen here. First introduced by Paul Milgram, the virtuality continuum is meant to show all possible variations and combinations of real and virtual objects. On one end of the spectrum, the environment is totally virtual, and on the other, real. Mixed reality spans a wide range of possible combinations in between, making information coming to your senses in part real and in part computer generated. Mixed reality has made considerable progress in popular media and has been featured in well-known films such as Minority Report. It's no longer there. Time frame? 13 minutes. In Minority Report, John Anderton is able to interact with the data that appears in front of him. But that data isn't in reality. It's an overlay on reality, made to act as part of the real world. Danny Whitworth, a twink from the Fed. Whoops, gum. We see the same thing with Avatar. Digital representations of the Pandora Island appear virtually in front of the characters. Okay, go, 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 stop. The experience of mixed reality will be far more impressive than anything we have today. It will be like this tree. Unobtainium deposit within 200 clicks. It will be mesmerizing. So how is mixed reality progressing in the media of today? You can see a kind of primitive mixed reality in the entity called Google Goggles. Google software uses pattern recognition technology and geotagging to identify what an image is and then provide the user with information about the picture. So if you're in a bookstore and you take a picture of a book, Google Goggles will return a search on that book, providing you with information about where to buy the book, uh, customer reviews of the book. You can do the same with a piece of art you see in a gallery. Instantly, you have access to the Internet's information on that painting, its author, the author's intention in creating it, when and where it was made. Before such visual search, you would have had to enter the information into your browser, and in some cases, you wouldn't have had the information. So you wouldn't have been able to know about it as easily or as quickly. You can also switch Google Goggles into a video mode and point at something like a restaurant and Google Goggles will provide information on that restaurant with reviews. Other ways that mixed and augmented reality is presented 
can be in the form of internet connected glasses that track your eye movements. And the same capability that one could put in glasses today, in a few years will be possible to put in contact lenses. And this raises the possibilities even uh, higher of, of what kinds of mixed reality experiences one could create. So in this area, much depends upon our concepts of what is real. French philosopher Jean Baudrillard's theory of hyperreality provides analogy to mixed reality without the use of computer simulation. There are regions and things in the world that, when encountered, we are transported, however brief, into the realm of fantasy, despite having encountered them in reality. Baudrillard felt much discontent for the culture of his time. He felt that media and consumerism had created many fictions in American reality, and that these fictions became disregarded as such and thought of as real. One way he thought that the fictional became thought of as real was to have something even more fictional stand in relation, thus distorting our perception of real and fantasy. Enter Disneyland, a gigantic region in tradition devoted to suspended disbelief. Baudrillard thought that by having places like Disneyland be the definition of fantasy by the American people, that all of the everyday fantasies, propagated by capitalist ideology, were made to look real in comparison. Whether or not one should agree with Baudrillard's analysis of American consumerism is not necessary for our purposes. What is clear is that entities like Disneyland which include Enchanted Village, Magic Mountain, and Marine World, provide an example of non-reality operating on top of, or within, what we usually deem reality, making them a kind of mixed reality, of a non-computer simulated kind, providing reason to give acknowledgement to the fact that there are many ways to experience reality. So why is mixed and virtual reality even possible? The human mind is actually has a propensity, a, a natural gift, to move into other realities. When you're reading a book, a novel, when you're totally engrossed in a story, particularly one that's not visual that you're imagining in your own mind, you're creating a kind of a version, a virtual reality. Insight into the mind's ability to move into other realities will be greatly enhanced with the advancement of mixed and virtual reality. Coming fully immersed in another world one without the limits of our own world, will in many ways be an evolution of the mind. We are only briefly able to encounter that freedom today through the imagination and lucid dreaming. Creators of virtual reality understand the importance of involving the body. As Andy Clark points out, an important feature of believing that we are somewhere is to have control over our sensory and motor systems. Typically, we think we are where we have control over our sensory systems. So, you know, I can move my eyes around and I think I am wherever that can be done. So telepresence, all the new technologies of telepresence rely on this. You know, give me a nice closed loop link to a camera on top of a building so that I can, as I move my head, that camera moves around and I'll begin to feel as if I'm on top of the building because you've closed the loop. You've closed the loop between motor control and sensory input coming from the world. This is one edge that mixed reality experiences have over virtual reality experiences of today. Because mixed reality happens in the real world and so movement of our bodies changes the sensory experiences we have making them feel more real. But it's not just all for entertainment. Mixed reality experiences will help make the world a better place. Here in this clip we see Adrian David Chiok's lab exploring relationships between people of different ages and the way in which you can bring humanity together through the rice Printer. With a rising elderly population, the problem of loneliness is a growing concern. Therefore, we introduce Food Media, an integrated system based around the common bonds between all generations, food and eating. 
The system consists of three components, each promoting a critical form of communication. First, a co-cooking pot and spoon, which encourages collaboration. Second, a by allowing anyone to send a digital message through a variety of popular social platforms, which the elderly can then receive through a physical and intuitive medium. The rice printer interfaces with social networking sites and telecommunication tools. It retrieves text messages and converts them into image format. The printer head is controlled by a robotic arm with two degrees of freedom. Printing is carried out by the open and close of the nozzle valve. The rice printer brings generations closer together. Well, we have enjoyed doing this first video for the Lifeboat Foundation. This has been Kim Solas and Nikki Olson bringing you a discussion of mixed reality and virtual reality.